Wowzer, Damon. Happy Monday, dude. How are you, man? I'm doing well, Kurt. Ready for today. Hey, good weekend or what? It was a good weekend. It was a great, it was a blessed weekend. Yeah. And hey, how about a special, special day today? We have an incredible, wonderful guest. I'm really a great day. We're talking, you know, like you and I love to talk about heroes. It's Martin Luther King yeah. Day. And just what a great day to celebrate our country and just a, a, an incredible hero, uh, how he changed the 20th century. And, you know, the I have a dream speech. And you know what? We might hit that a little bit later in our conversation. I want to get an intro going for our amazing, incredible guest. And just what a special day. What a special guest. Sean Tierney. Sean, happy Monday, man. How are you today? Hey, thank you so much. Happy Monday to you as well. Really appreciate you having me on. Uh, our privilege, dude, this is, uh, you know, you and I have been crossing paths and finally you, you're on the show here today and boy, you have a ton going on. So I want to talk about a couple of different things here. You are the king of automation in my little tiny humble opinion. You've got a lot of moving parts going on with your business and we're going to dig into that. And on top of it, dude, you are a content machine. So I'd like to, you know, we speak to manufacturers here on our program. It's Manufacturing Monday Motivation on Martin Luther King Day. So what a great day to be motivated here with our buddy, Sean. Sean, my first question for you today, okay, we're talking about heroes. You're a young boy growing up. Who was your hero? Who yeah, was you, your hero as a little boy growing up? That You know, that's a great question. Um, you know, you, it, it's funny because... You know, as a Christian, I have, you know, like like Martin Luther King Jr., you know, he was he was a yeah. minister. Right. Yeah. So I have one hero. He's he's my king. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's 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 the the one answer is always comes back to that, you know. But of yeah. course, my dad was my hero. Nice. You know, as a little boy, your dad and mom. Mom was so smart and she was so even though she was a stay at home mom when we were little, you know, she was so smart. Even though she never went to college, she was so smart. And, uh, you know, I remember my mom and dad would jump on all the new tech stuff that comes out, you know, yeah. back in the day in the 70s and 80s. When the new tech came out, my mom and dad both got um, both got a personal computer when they first came out. And I got my own personal computer, too. And right. they were interested in programming. You know, my dad's even though he's a mechanic, he. He um he was a jack of all trades. He built his own two story garage, you know, and all. And I get the I get to do all those things with him, nice. you know. Um, so yeah. So I mean, those are kind of my heroes, you know. I mean, um, um, you know, you know, mom and dad, especially across the the king of kings, but then uh, mom yeah. and dad too. Well, yeah. uh, dude, what a, man, Damon, I, man, is this just fire today or what, man? So yeah. it's just re so we're talking faith. You know, your hero in faith, you were talking Martin Luther King Jr. We're talking about Martin Luther King being on Martin Luther King Day, mom and dad. And Sean, what are mom and dad's names? Just to give it a little shout out. Oh, Stephen and Karen. Yeah. Stephen and Karen. So, hey, God bless Stephen and Karen for just this inspiration. Yep. You talk about like that original computer. Is it is it over your shoulder? It's not behind you, is it? I'm just kidding, right? So. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. So it's great that mom and dad were like on the forefront, cutting edge by, you know, first computer, you know, I'm picturing, you know, all of us are from, you know, back in the day, 70s, 80s, we're probably playing our, our, our Pong or whatever it was called and Atari and whatever the latest uh, video game, right, Damon? Yep. So what was your first computer, Sean? Well, the first computer I used at school was an Apple II. I think a lot of people are familiar with that. My and we had a, I think we had one of everything at the house. Yeah. But my per my first computer was the Commodore VIC twenty, for nice. pricing pricing wise. And I had some uh, friends at school who had them and really loved them. And uh, of course, mom had the TI ninety nine uh four uh, A, I believe it was. And my brother had the the I think it was the ZX eighty. And you know, it goes on and on. Oh, that's great. Oh, that's awesome. So, Sean, let's go here. So, guys, uh, happy Monday. Happy Martin Luther King Day. We're here with our buddy, Sean. Sean, I just dropped your LinkedIn in the chat box there. Guys, we encourage you. We invite you. We implore you. Connect with Sean. Sean, we've got a couple folks here. We've got our dear friend, Diane, is in the house. He's saying uh, hello. Hey, no, Whitney, really. happy Monday. Ha happy Martin Luther King Day to you, my friend. Thanks for joining us. Guys, if you're here, drop us a note. Let us know that you're here. Connect with our buddy, Sean. Sean, so let's slide in. So you're kind of like leading up to my next Next question is like we almost had this prepared, but you know, your talents, your skills, your superpowers are all around tech. 
and we're going to dig into like, you know, your, your business, you have multiple moving parts, automation blog, you have the automation school, and we're going to get into the details, but what led you to bringing your superpowers, your talents into the world of technology, automation in particular, but you know, when you're a young man, like just coming out of high school, college, what led you down this path? Well, you know, I, I spent a lot of time in my youth, my mis misspent youth before I had a car programming. <laughs> so from my preteen years wow. up until the point where a car and, and, and doing those type of things, which are more important, <clears throat> I just program, program, program. So when it came time to go to college, I said, you know, I want to do electronics because I spent so much time programming. Mm -hmm. I figured I wanted to do some hands on build stuff like my father did yeah. build stuff, build electronic circuits. And um, so great, great uh, 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 course that I went through um, at New England Institute of Technology, really enjoyed it. Lots of hands-on in that school. It was a little expensive for us being lower middle class, but, uh, but you know, really learned it. And so then, you know, I had a couple of jobs and I stumbled into the automation, industrial automation, because they were looking for somebody who knew P PCs and PLCs. And I told my wife at the time, I says, I don't know what that L is, but I know PCs inside and out, right? And so I, that's how I stumbled into this job, working tech support, and did it for 25 years, visited thousands of factories, met some of the most intelligent, smartest people in the industry. So blessed to have worked with so many great people, both at the vendors and, and at the distributors and the customers, just some yeah. really smart, both engineers and electricians and technicians. And um, after 25 years, I get tired of driving. Um, I had a big territory. The people I worked with were phenomenal, but I was just spending most of my time in the car, you know, spending, uh, you know, six to eight hours a day driving to all these different places to get maybe four to six hours worth of work done. So that's where I, I said, hey, everybody's telling me they need information. They, they right. don't get to see the salespeople enough. They don't get to see the technical people enough. And that's when I started Insights and Automation, two parts the automation blog, the automation show, the automation podcast, kind of sharing tidbits about automation news and all that. And then on the other side, the automation school where I teach actual online training courses to, to help take those people to the next level. Maybe you're an electrician, you're a technician, you're an engineer, and you want to learn PLCs, HMI, SCADA. We do that at the automation school. That's perfect, Sean. So let's go here. So so what we're hearing, a lot of windshield time, but during that time, you know, like the famous saying, boy, if you pursue your passion, you'll never work a day in, in your life. What it sounds like in the early parts of those 25 years, just, you know, really pursuing your passion, helping people, understanding electronics, circuit boards, that whole thing is, is that like, you just felt like this is my calling. Like I'm right where I'm supposed to be. Is that what, is that how that went for you? Well, it's, you know, I've, I've always been a, a technology enthusiast, you know, I've always been, ex, you know, video games, computers, technology. I still remember my, my older brother got his first digital watch, right? Yeah. I still remember when we got our first VCR, first Walkman, you yeah, know, yeah. first, uh, my first account on CompuServe, always have been a technology guy. Like yeah. I still build my own computers, right? I. I taught my kids how to build their own computers. I'm, I've taught my grandkids how to build their own computers. You know, I'm just a technology guy. You know, I love watching Linus Tech Tips. And so um, I love that job because I would get to, get to uh, take the knowledge I learned at the factory a couple, three, four times, four weeks a year. Yeah. And then I would go out to the field and pass it on to these great people who are changing the world, literally changing yeah. the world by, by making production lines or keeping the utility going or, you know, all the things that they were doing. And, and I got to be the conduit of uh, the new information and bring it out to them. And it was fun. But again, after a while, you, you hear the same things over and over again. We need more information. We need to see people more. We need affordable training. And so the windshield time gave me so much time to think about that. I said, hey, you know, what? I'm, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take a leap of faith. I'm going to go out and actually create a company that interviews vendors, tries to get new information, puts tidbits and takes my own knowledge and shares it with them on the automation blog, but also give them structured courses they can go through at the automation school. That's awesome. So let's go. Hey, we've got a, our friend, Jannie, great state of Michigan. Jannie, good morning. I don't even know what time it is. I just I always lose time when I'm having fun, Damon. So good morning. Good afternoon. Happy Martin Luther King Day to everybody. So Jannie, thanks for joining us. 
But Sean, I love what you just said. And earlier you mentioned, you know, you're a man deep in faith and you talk about taking that leap of faith. So I'm going to, guys, I dropped the website in there, the automation blog. So check out Sean's website. It is a powerhouse of content. Yeah. You know, you're working for 25 years. Say there's somebody out there that, you know, they're working relentlessly and they're going at it and they're like, you know, boy, I'd love to be an entrepreneur someday. Take us through, I think, what'd you say, 2013-ish, you know, give or take. What what was that like, you know, family, spouse, you know, that 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 big decision of take, you know, man, I'm gonna I don't have that steady paycheck anymore. I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm starting my entrepreneurial journey. Share with folks what was that like for you? Well, I, I pretty much made every every mistake. <laughs> so <laughs> there you go. So don't do what I did. But yeah. um no, I think I think Good. um we got to we got to get rid of the 8 to 5 mythos right we got to destroy that right yeah you you got to and and i'm not saying be a slave because so much when we're working all year and half of everything we get is taken away from us that's yeah. wrong right so we got to break that down we got to get the the consciousness of the public especially in this country we got to break that down it is wrong to only get half of what you earn yeah. but putting that aside um you know, life is an eight to five. Life is when it happens, right? So, so I think if we can, if we can put our brains around that and say, look, let's just work as hard as we can every day to do as much as we can every day. And right. you know, if if we get it done in six hours or nine hours or twelve hours, you know, as long as we feel like we're moving the ball forward, we're making progress. Does it really matter how long the football game is if you're if you're following your plan and you win the game? No. You know, are there a lot of penalties on the other? Does the other team like run the ball or pass? It, the point is, you're there. You're there. You're on the field to win the game, right? And you 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 have a plan and you want to follow it the best you can. And so I would tell people, I say, forget about you know clocking in at eight and clocking out at five. Think about what you want to accomplish, and th- also never forget you need time for yourself. You need time for your family too. Yeah, I think it's very hard for people to remember to take time for themselves. Like I now force myself to take a lunch break. I used to not do that, but I because you you need to recharge your batteries. That that's my opinion. Right. Uh, that's fantastic. So let's dig into. I pulled. I'm going to pull it up again. You started with the automation blog. Is that correct? Was that kind of the first piece that you went after with the content? Well, it's always it's always been uh, uh, two two uh, streams here. So yep. the automation blog and states and automation started in 2013. At the same time, I was filming my course for Kickstarter I launched. So I launched a Kickstarter at the same time nice. for the first PLC course, PLC basics. And then they both kept going at the same time. So, so, you know, one is all about, you know, it's, it's like a magazine for what's new in automation yep. and the other is a, a training site for automation. So yep. they both have been, you know, side by side. That's insights and automation is the company. And then we have the two websites. So a techie guy who, again, like, you know, grew up on the Walkman, Damon, I'm picturing you and I doing aerobics class with our Walkman in hand, right? You know, you, you, you get the visual, right? The two <laughs> socks with the, the colors right around it, right? Yeah. In our Walkmans. So Sean, you're, you know, you're heavy duty tech guy right from the early stages. 2013 comes around. Dude, you're just, you're a fierce, you're a content machine. Was that intentional? Was it gradual? Like how, you know, you have a massive following. We were talking about it before we went live. You have a great LinkedIn following. You're just killing it on YouTube. Again, you like for folks that want to get to where you are or think about where you were at 2013, 14, were you intentional with this content or just share, you know, can you go back 10 years ago? Like where was your mindset? How did you get here? Yeah, because because I think, you know, I and a lot of tech people, especially programmers, we we have this um, this knack to want to do things very orderly, yeah, almost like in a librarian type of or encyclopedic type of order. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, all my content at the beginning was very, you know, it was basics through advanced, and and was really set up like that. And uh, now I, I have embraced uh, insanity, not insanity. <laughs> chaos i've embraced chaos yeah, yeah. And now you know we could be talking you know random stuff from day to day to day but uh in any case i think you know one of the important things to do is you gotta uh, again let's talk about demystifying right so yeah. we all know the story of a kid who says i don't need to do good in school because i'm going to be a pro player yeah some small or, or something right, right? right. And, and that's great because some of those kids will but right. the vast majority of the kids who think they're going to be a pro ball player or a pro gamer 
or a pro live streamer, right? The vast majority are not going to do that, right? And so the, the thought process is if I just stream every day my video game or if I just practice every day at my my sport, you know, that's good and you should do that, but you also have to have something else backed up because less than 1%, you know, far, far less than 0.1% make it, right? And so the thought process is a lot of people are spending their time doing those, like a lot of people blogging will never make a dime. A lot of people, most people write books, make less than $5,000 total mm -hmm. on their book. Now I'm not talking about like per hour. I'm talking about total revenue from their book right. Right. that may have taken them hundreds and hundreds of hours, less than $5,000. Right. They're, so, they're lucky if they only spent $5,000 to do it. <laughs> oh, no, no. Yeah. It, it yeah. Probably more I'm like $500,000. Yeah. Right, 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 right. No, really, it's it's um. So you you got to go into it with that kind of understanding that, yeah. um, you don't quit. Like in 2013, I didn't quit my job. You know, mm -hmm. I started this all as you know, I'm not going to watch TV every night. I'm not going to play video games yeah. every night. You know, I'm not going to sit around and just you know read the paper right. every night. I'm going to do this. Right. And so, if you start seeing success, you can tweak it. Try to start seeing more success. But yeah, unless you're independently wealthy or retired or have a retirement, like. There's a lot of, you know, if you're in the military for 20 years, you can, you'll, you'll yeah. draw a retirement in some places. Yeah. If you're in public service for 20 years, you'll draw it. Unless you're one of those people, a lot of times you need to start your passion work on the side, Yeah, you know, while you're still at work, because you need to have success there. And again, yeah. unless you're, you're, your spouse or, or significant other has a killer job, that's the way. And that's how I started it. Yeah. 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 So kind so using our famous phrase of the, of the day. So you started a side hustle. Yes. And side hustle graduated into your full time hustle. Is that? Yeah, it did. It did. I, I, if when I, when I left in 2015, you know, I was just, you know, I made the decision because I knew it was time. I had hit 25 years and I needed to move on. You know, I wasn't, um, you know, I wouldn't say the business was self sustaining at that point. Yeah. But I was very fortunate to have a wife who did have a sta stable job. And, yep. you know, it's yep. one of those things where I knew to go to the next level, I was going to take some short term pain financially. Yeah. Yep, for, yeah. for long term success. And, uh, and uh, just I thank the good Lord above because it's, um, I've it just, uh, it's all about for me, it's all about helping people. It's all about, you know, educating or, or, or helping them out of a jam, you know, if they find an error, it's like, yeah. so many times I would search for errors I'd run into and nobody had put anything online about them. Yeah. And it's like, you know, we gotta, we gotta all work together. We gotta all move this ball forward. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I absolutely love it. Hey, a couple more shout outs here. So Whitney says, so true. I work through lunch. And so she says, brilliant advice. Absolutely love it. And hey, our dear friend, Christy Johns. Christy, happy Monday. Happy Martin Luther King Day to you, my friend. Thank you for joining us. So Sean, so you're talking about uh, school. And what I absolutely love, Damon, you and I talk about how do you out teach the competition? How do you out teach a competition? We work and coach with a lot of manufacturers, you know, trying to figure out this whole digital transformation. You know, they were going to trade shows. They had sales reps on the road. This little COVID thing came around and kind of disrupted their world. So how do they better educate? You know, how do they better uh, become sales folks from an online perspective? What I admire and respect what you do, Sean, is like, I feel you're like the fierce educator, man. So again, I'm going to pull up your website here. We've got the automation school. Talk about like your passion, your energy. So when folks go to that website, just give us the background of it and how like you're just out there fiercely educating folks on better certification, automation, uh, electronics, the whole gamut. Just talk about your passion there. Yeah. So I'm not trying to outdo anybody else. There are a lot of great educators out there, right? Um, for the people who watch my videos who who who, who say, you know, what? I really click with Sean. That's where the, the courses are, yep. right? And they're affordable, yep. lifetime access, lifetime support. You know, having been, um, you know, I tried many things in, in developing this business. One of them was being on Udemy or Udemy. Yep. And uh, I realized this, just like books, most people who buy an online course never take it. And, oh, really? and of, the, of the remaining 5% that do take it, 90% of those people never get past the first couple of lessons. So because of that, and because of my experience having been in this industry since 1990, when well, the people who do need the information, they need to come back time and time again because mm -hmm. automation doesn't break every day. Just like yeah. when you're working on your car, right? Like I still have to read, like I have a, a reader that read the, 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 the codes in my car. Like I haven't used it in three years. So I'm like, oh, I don't remember what buttons to press to get it to work, right? Yeah. So we do lifetime access, lifetime support because 
you know, this is what I've done my entire life. If somebody makes an investment in our course, we want them to come back in three years and be able to say, hey, I'm having this problem with RS links and I really don't know what to do. And I watched the lesson and I'm confused and, and that's why I'm here. People, you know, people are always afraid that the students will abuse it. They don't. They don't. You know, people, the vast majority of people on this planet are really good people yeah. and they care and they are decent and they will not abuse you. And if you have 0.1% that do, there's ways to handle that. You know, you can give them their money back and say, you know, maybe my course wasn't for you. But yeah, so just, you know, I'm there for people who click with me. If they think that they can learn from me, you know, I have thousands and thousands of hours on YouTube and articles yeah. on the blog. And hey, yeah. I'm going to be there for you. You know, I had that 25 years in the field helping people and learned so much from them yeah. that I feel like there's, there's a segment of the population I can help. In 10 years in, you know, with, with tens of thousands of followers, you know, the big thing is, you know, the word, Damon, that we always love preaching is, is trust, right? So it certainly takes time. Sean, any, what, any advice that you have, again, for folks out there, uh, you know, say manufacturers. And so, you know, when we're talking about like out teaching the, the, uh, the competition, say like in ma manufacturer, you know, could be a circuit board manufacturer, could be CNC shop, could be 3D printer, whatever they are, you know, and the goal is like, how can they resonate? How can they earn somebody else's business? How can they build that trust? You've done an amazing job of earning folks' trust. What advice do you have for manufacturers out there that want to kind of follow your footsteps of building that trust? So in my opinion, most of the successful uh, manufacturers and, and those on the rising, those rising yeah. are authentic and honest. Nice. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we are, I think those of us who are brass tax guys who are, you know, programming the equipment, specking the equipment, picking it out, programming yeah. it, wiring it. We can sense BS a mile away. Okay. Yeah. A when, good, good judge of character, right? You will, you will see our eyes start glossing over when you're starting to let go. It's like, yeah. we want authentic. We want honesty. We want truth. And as technical people, that is so easy for us. We're very humble because we've, how many times have we written a line of code that didn't work? And we're like, oh, no, you can't use that variable there. And, yeah, you yeah. know, so, but honesty, trust, and, and nobody knows everything. Like nobody knows it all. Like I learn new stuff every week from my students when they try stuff right. um, and it doesn't work, you know? Right. So you just got to be humble. You got to be honest. You got to be authentic. And for manufacturers, right? I see a lot of manufacturers make the mistake of puffing themselves up bigger than they are. And I think a lot of people see right through that. Right. And it, when you lose a customer, you lose them. Typically, you'll lose them forever. Yeah. So better to be honest and be yourself and be truthful than try to claim something you're not and then lose a customer forever. There are, I think we all have the stories of like, there are vendors I won't use. There are stores I won't go to because they they lost my trust. Right. Yeah, it yeah. takes ages to to earn it and to gain it, and it takes seconds to lose it. Right? Exactly. It's yep. very quick. Sean, you're now uh, for 2023. Uh, I want to hit this point for a couple reasons. Number one, you know, it's we're still kind of fresh in the new year. Hopefully, yeah. resolutions haven't gone away yet. And so, like, you know, for anybody out there, they have you know still carrying your audacious goals for 2023. Get out of your comfort zone. You know, Damon, we were talking about being uncomfortably. Uh, what was it? Uh, uncomfortably courageous, courageously uncomfortable. Yeah. That was our term. Remember that one? Yeah. Courageously uncomfortable. Sean, you, I, dude, I just love what you're doing. Love the work. Yeah. You got courageously uncomfortable. You wanted to put out something daily. Can you just share a little bit of like the mindset and like yeah, the well. goal, the strategy of what you're doing behind that? Yeah, no. And that's a great point. And I totally agree with that. You, you have to push yourself if you're going to grow. Right. If you want to grow, you got to push yourself. It doesn't, you know, whether you want to run a 5K or you want right. to, uh, you know, bench press however many pounds or yeah. you want to eat healthier, you kind of got to get a little uncomfortable with yourself. You got to kind of shake yourself out and it's yeah. good. But, you know, we're the best at shaking ourselves out of that comfort zone because usually that comfort zone is the downward slope zone, right? It's, it's like a no cool, road. comfortable ride into, you know, into, bad places. Right. So, right. you know, take, for instance, somebody who stops walking, they're getting older. They're like, oh, you know, I don't, you know, if you don't push yourself to get out there and conversely yeah. take the people who said, Hey, I just retired. I'm 65. I would like to run a marathon. And these old yeah. folks, they stop yeah. walking every day and then they start running. Yeah. So 
those are our options. So for me, I found that yeah. when I took the podcast a couple of years ago to weekly, that it was really hard, but it was very uncomfortable. But it really just, I got to meet so many more people. It was so awesome Yeah. that um, for this year, for my goal for this year was to do a daily show. Now, I know there's going to be trips to trade shows where I won't be able to do it or vacations where my wife drags me out of the office and says, yeah, yeah, hey, yeah. we're going to go have some fun where I won't be able to do it. But um, I started, um, uh, I guess, the beginning of the year, January 2nd, I guess, I started a daily show where I'm going through a few hundred websites looking for news and industrial automation and then putting together both a video and an article about it. And uh, just sharing, wow. I try to share between nine and 12 uh, articles or podcasts or manuals, just to, you know, so it's a one-stop, you know, somebody's driving into work, they can just put it on and they can say, okay, what's new today? And uh, I try not to steal anybody's thunder. I mean, some people, they spend hours and hours and hours writing these articles. So I always try to leave, you know, I try to give them the gist, but not try to steal their thunder, you know, and, um, but it's, it helps me immensely doing that research every day yeah. and uh, learning what's new. It helps me get my pulse on. I mean, the only way you could do it would be to go to trade show every day. Right. So it helps yeah. me keep my pulse on what's happening in the industry. And hopefully I can, take some of the searching out and going through these couple hundred websites every day for the viewers and listeners and uh, readers. Cause I also do a blog on it and kind of, you know, uh, you know, put together what I think is the best of what's new in industrial automation every day. So huge, huge stretch goal for me this year. And I'm, I'm, uh, I'm really so far it's going good. <laughs> Well, hey, how about everybody? Let's give a little round of applause right there. Usually we save it to the end, Sean. We're coming, we're giving like, you know, right smack. I don't know where middle, where we are in the show, but dude, that is just such an inspiration. Yeah. And, you know, Damon, you know, go giver, right? Like we talked yeah. about being that go giver. And I yep. just, John just epitomized that with just this in, insane amount of content he puts out, just, you know, putting in the reps day after day after day. And Sean, you've built, you know, man, kudos to you. The entrepreneurial success story, you know, tens of thousands of followers and just look at the lives you're changing, you know, and I'm going off script a little bit here. You were sharing with Damon and I before we went uh, went live on your tr when, you, when you have students that come through your training, what happens to their income? Oh, yeah. I mean, typically double or triple. I mean. It's it's um I'm I'm sorry to interrupt you. I'm I'm a little I'm I'm not a young man anymore. I can't hear that well. What did you say? Double or triple. I mean, if you want to get if you are interested in programming and automation and you're working as an, a, a, a technician just wiring things up, right? You can double or triple your income easily, and that's yeah. because you're much more valuable because most people won't stretch to do that. Yeah. Most people will say I'm an electrician, you know, voltage, current, power. I got my uh, client screwdriver. That's what I do. Yeah. And that's great for people. Yeah. But if you want more, if you're like, hey, you know, I've wired up, you know, a thousand things and I want to learn more. I want what's in that black box. What is that? How do yeah. they make those graphics on that touchscreen work? Right? right. That's when they that's when they come to the school. And that's it. That's what it's all about. I mean, really, yeah. it's all about, you know, and, you know, I don't know how much time I left. 20, 30 years, maybe. I mean, then I'm going to be dust. <laughs> you know. So yeah. if I can help some people make their lives better, that's what it's all about. And you That's mean awesome. to say, Sean, that, that somebody could actually go out into the trade world and make like a really killer living? Is that what you're implying here? <laughs> that, yes, yes, yes. I think, and yeah. not only that, they could also wow. become an entrepreneur and become a huge success. So I just, man, I just and love this. The other thing about this, the, the world of automation is so absolutely incredible to me because of the variety i mean because i used yeah. to work in manufacturing and I, you know, I actually started my career designing and then helping uh, to coordinate projects on automation right yep. and you see how that automation works and then you see how it works at a factory level and then you get you get a little more experience and you see well how does it work like uh, in an ethanol processing facility or a oil refinery or a or a just a food processing facility or a wastewater treatment facility i mean it is incredible where automation is in in from a standpoint of uh, we were talking about it before, too, on the oil fields, oil field services. And just think about all the stuff that has to move around water. And it, it just it's, it's so much that's happening in that industry that these people can have 
incredibly interesting careers right next yeah. to their where they live now or anywhere in the world. Yeah, no, amen. You know, I think of it, it's like, kind of like the early PC days, right? Yeah. Remember, you used to get the computer yeah. shopper. It was like this thick. It was the size of a phone book. Yep. And there were just hundreds of customers making uh, companies making computers and sound cards. And that's where we are with industrial automation. It's just there are so many great companies out there. And I'm I'm just scratching the surface. I mean, you get your big names, but, you know, in in really computers and you know mobile devices that's kind of really shrunken quite a bit mm -hmm. and um and um, it's not as exciting as it used to be i mean there's two people who make video cards yeah I mean, there's two major chipset manufacturers there's two major right. cell phone manufacturers it's kind of really shrunken the excitement's kind of like either your x or y you know right. but industrial automation is still like those early days in computers where you just had just so many companies doing great stuff exciting stuff innovative well, creative and it just yes yeah much, right yeah. and they don't have to be the the gms or the exons of the world it's it's you know dave's making whatever down the street and they need automation to do this part in their in their process yeah. or you know it doesn't there are so many different places where automation plays and uh, it plays a big part in it and as we look at the workforce and the labor force going forward automation and robotics and all the things that we need just to keep up with not having enough people to do it as we go forward is going to be an even bigger role. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Let, you know, and let's sit on that, man, we're going off script again, Sean. So, and not that we had anything, Damon, we had nothing planned anyway, but yeah, anyway. Sure well, we talk with a lot of MEPs, manufacturing extension. Yeah. As a matter of fact, our friend Christie's here today. We have a couple of yep. folks from TAC who support the MEP network. And so, Damon, we uh, we encounter a lot of small manufacturers in the food sector. And boy, when you have like a two, three, five person manufacturer and they pick up their first piece of automation. I'm just yeah. I'm working with a hot sauce uh, manufacturer yeah. actually out your way, Damon. And he's looking at some new pieces of automation and he feels he feels this could completely come a total game changer. You know, we have a granola company that we've worked with five, you know, three to five employees. They've got new automation, totally changes the whole trajectory. Sean, so, you know, when you hear automation, a lot of people are like, oh, no, it's going to replace jobs. It's just creating opportunity. Is I mean, isn't that a do you where do you where do you feel there? Is that just a myth on automation or like what, what do you feel there? Yeah, you know, I know you remember when they, they first hooked up the ox to that wheel, right? All the people used to grain the stuff by hand. They were like, oh, man, our job's gone. Yeah. No, they were like, get that ox over here. It's just sitting in the field doing nothing. Right. Let it do the dumb work so we right. can go do something more like actually right. bake a cake. <laughs> you know, yeah. so so automation. That goes way, way back. Right. We're going back to, back really to the Luddites, days. right. I mean, like right. you go back to the Luddites and they were like, you know, they were rioting over like losing their jobs and machinery. But all it did is it just created new jobs and new. Yeah. It always for the history of time, it's always the you know you mentioned Martin Luther King Jr. or Martin Luther King to open up the program when he came up with the printing press. How many right? How many people were like, oh, there goes my job, right? And look, what it created an entire revolution. It was the, it, that was the social media of the you know 1500s. It completely changed the world, right? Well, and and I like that. There's always going to be a, a struggle there, right? There's always you have your early adopters, your later adopters. There's right. always going to be a struggle between how much automation is too much, and I think it's very natural, and that's what we need. If you, in yeah. an open marketplace with 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 a free press and with free speech, that can, is extremely healthy. And we decide where do we want to be. Right. But if I like one place I like to take is the company Beach that, that makes baby food. They built a brand new facility and I was able to visit them many times and, and consult on them and teach them different things. And the old plant was this big red brick building is really nasty looking. The new one is just gorgeous, beautiful. Yeah, yeah. And on the side of the there's a mural when you walk in, at least it used to be when you walk in and it was a black and white picture of just these ladies with hairnets all carving up potatoes or carrots or whatnot, what, you know, by hand. Mm -hmm. And it seemed like the table of these workers went on forever, right? Now, that was a good job, especially these were just, you know, in many cases, probably just homemakers. They really didn't have anything else to do. The kids were in school. You know, they could make some money and make a good product. Today, my grandkids, right, they're uh, teenage, preteen age. They've always had a touchscreen in their hand. Right. Right. They're not going to be satisfied with cutting carrots all day, right? There, there's, they're, they live in a different world. 
they live in a world where it's like why why would i do that why why would you go back why would you it's like why would you give put yourself through pain purposely yeah. you know just like you know you don't go to the river every time you want to drink water we have buckets for that right yeah. i mean as we move forward in time we learn new skills we learn better ways of doing things there's 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 no reason the kids of today want to go backwards to the 1950s and do things that way oh you have to watch tv your sh you can only watch a show the exact hour it's on during the week and if yeah. you miss it you can never see it again yeah <laughs> that's it that's it. it's over it's like you can't yeah. you missed episode i remember i was on the phone with a power plant during the final episode of the seinfeld and i missed the whole final episode of Seinfeld. the <laughs> next day everybody in the office talking about what did you think of that i have no idea i was on the phone at yeah, five at five who active you know getting into your plc5 and you know so so you that's, know, that's the way it was back then yeah that's right, right? yeah Un unfathomable for for our kids and, and, and as you mentioned grandkids so why would we yeah. want to go back to that why That's would we want great to do explanation things less efficient great. why would you want to do things less efficient perfect perfect analogy so yeah. sean i want to be mindful of your time my friend i know you are super busy and i want to be mindful of everybody else here as we start winding down where can people find you any I, you've got your daily show going on for 2023 Man, what an inspiration that is. Anything else that uh, we've got your automation school, the automation blog, anything else that you have coming up on the horizon that we would love to share with everybody? Yeah, so I would just say, look, if you want to get in touch with me, if you want to con connect with me, LinkedIn, you know, uh, you can find me up there. I do have a, I created a new page for Insights and Automation. So if you want to catch the daily show, I post it in there. Of course, the automationblog.com is where you'll find thousands of our articles and videos. Uh, we also have a YouTube channel uh, with a lot of followers. But, uh, you know, primarily if you're a manufacturer and you want to just stay abreast, check out the Insights and Automation uh, page, uh, company page on LinkedIn, or just visit the automationblog.com. Perfect. Sean, last question for you, my friend. Our, we, man, what a great episode. First off, thank you. Thank you for yes. sharing your thank passion, you. your expertise, your experience. Man, this has just been a delight. We've been talking about motivation. We've talked about Martin Luther King, Martin Luther King Jr. We've been talking about our, our you know, deep in faith and just our excitement with our careers and your passion for helping folks with automation and just the boy, the lives that you've changed coming through your courses and you know what they've done for their career the confidence, the income, so on and so forth. 2023, your big audacious goal doing your daily show. What or who inspires you? I asked you who your hero was. 2023, who or what is your inspiration for 2023? Well, <laughs> I think I think all of us. I mean, I think 2023 is going to be 2023 is going to be a phenomenal year. There will be some ups and downs this year. There are up and ups and downs every year. But I can tell you the the human spirit, right? The the human spirit rising to the occasion saying, "We're not going to let anything keep us down. We're not going to let the next uh, issue or or kerfuffle keep us down. We believe right. we believe in in making the uh, future brighter." And so I think you're going to see a, in America, in Australia, in England, and we have a, we have a lot of uh, English uh, speaking uh, countries that follow us. I think that people are going to stand up and say, we're going to make 2023 a great year. So I'm just trying to be a part of it because I know what that's what you guys are doing, too. You guys are going to have a great year. You're going to have some great shows this year. And so I'm just trying to keep up with the Jonas Joneses and ride that wave of excellence in 2023. It's going to be an awesome year. God, dude, what a... Drop the mic, Sean. Just drop the mic. And hey, but our friend Diane says the magic of yeah. the human spirit making the future brighter. What a great way. Yeah, to no doubt. Man. So, all right, guys, what we'll do is we're going to wind down. Please connect with Sean on LinkedIn. Do yourself a favor. Just a man of integrity. Just doing great yeah. work. Boy, if you have any companies, manufacturers, any folks that you're working with that needs help in this area, Sean is your go-to guy. We have all the, you know, check the chat box, come back and catch a replay. Stop by Sean's website, check out the automation school, the automation blog, see Sean on LinkedIn. Sean, thank you, my friend. We appreciate you. God bless you, brother. Guys, go out and just like Sean said, man, just be someone's inspiration and just keep crushing it. Damon, 
Man, what another great episode, huh? How about yeah, this? we just we did. We're so blessed to be able to talk to people like you, Sean. Just thanks so much. I was I was blessed to have you, being on your show. Thank you both, and thank the audience too, because you guys are yeah. awesome, and we appreciate Everyone you taking time here. out of your day to be with us. Yep, thank you guys. And hey, this Friday, man, we're back on on manufacturing e-commerce success. We have Ray Zagano from the MEP Manufacturing Extension Partnership at Illinois. Christy, Christy was with us. So we've got IMEC in the house. Ray Zagano is going to be here on Friday. We've got a great guest coming up for the rest of the month. So guys, have a great, amazing week. Sean, hang out with us one second and have a wonderful, amazing Martin Luther King Day. And boy, just really embrace what today is. The history of today, what today is about. Go back and listen to that speech and just, man, I'm getting chills just even thinking about it and just how great our country is, how far we've come and how much further, as Sean just said, how much further we're going to go. So, all right, guys, have a great day. See ya.